Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our coordinates onboarding. Uh, so you all may be familiar with coordinates as a user of the front end to access and take data into your own systems. But today we want to show you how a new customer of ours would set up a coordinate site and then upload and manage their data in groups. So this is really about our onboarding experience for our customers. Uh, we just want to show you how easy it is to actually get set up with a completely new site from scratch. So introducing our team today, we have Eli Chadwick, our sales engineer, who will lead us on a tour of this platform. And we also have Jonathan Ball, our product manager. Jonathan's going to be available to answer any of your questions. You'll see at the bottom of your screen there is a Q&A button. If you hit that, jump in, um, ask us anything you'd like. We will, uh, yeah, either answer it in the app there or we'll discuss it after or we will follow up with you if it's a little out of our league and super technical. Also, we're going to record this and send it out to everyone who registered. So uh, the information will still be available to you. So I'm going to run through a really quick overview of what coordinates is just for the people who are new to it. And then I will hand over to Eli so he can show you the good stuff. So coordinates is your data platform. This is for you to brand up with your own organization and for self-service access for your customers, teams and collaborators. Coordinate sits in the cloud. So this means you don't have to worry about how much space you're going to need in two or three years time with hardware. It does scale as you need it. There is no desktop app or API required for data management. So you do everything in your favorite internet browser. Um, we do have a desktop app and we do have APIs, but you don't actually need them. It is self-service format translation, and this will be the side of coordinates that you may be familiar with, where you can come along, preview and export the data sets that you want into your favorite GIS format, perhaps in a PDF, or for the engineers and architects out there, they might be using um, CAD software and need DWGs. And this is all with automatic coordinate transformation. So if your projects are working in a different coordinate system than the producer of the data, it doesn't matter. You can get the data in the coordinate system that you need. It is scalable and performant. So as I mentioned before, a benefit of being in the cloud and being managed by us means that if you have a massive project come along or say an emergency management event, you can load data in and coordinates will scale as you need it. We're also ISO 27001 certified. This is the standard for data information um, security. So we have had um, government as a customer for over 10 years and we've designed with security in mind to keep your data set super safe. Then from the individual data set point of view, you as the owner would have permissions to configure for the the users. So you can make sure that if you have some sensitive data that you only want a small team to see, you can create a group and make sure that only those people have access to it. And you can also have open data that you're promoting to the public all in the same place. APIs are automatically created off the data. So it doesn't matter what format you've loaded it up as, the services tab will appear for the data set. And what's missing from my slide here is actually um, we have REST services uh, newly uh, yeah, added to this. So here's how it works. If you imagine this cloud here as your site and you have some, oh, I've lost my slide. There we go. Um, you might have some point cloud captured from LiDAR. You might have some imagery, some vector data, and you want to load it into your site to share with your customers. This is what we're going to focus on today, which is the data management web app and how that works and how you can load all your data through here into your site for these people to see. Uh, the other things that we have are APIs. So if you want to do script updates um, to regularly changing data, you could do that. Or if you use a tool like FME, um, you can use those you know, your ETL tools to also load in um, to your site. Then your, from your customer side, they can do the same. They can access it using the white label portal, which you may be familiar with um, if you're a coordinates user already. If you're a developer or you like REST services or other OGC services for automating data updates, you can create your own API keys and you can use the ETL tools um, all to bring into your own systems. So I'm gonna stop sharing there so that Eli can take you on this tour. So I thought I'd start at the end today and show you what a completed site looks like. And in fact, I'm going to grab some data off it to load into my new site. 
So this is Land Information New Zealand. It's a site we've been running for many years. Um, if I jump into favorites, I have favorited a few items that I want to grab copies of. Each of these is a data set. I can open the map, look at the details. It's got bits and pieces about it. I'm going to add it to the map. So I want a copy of the building outlines. I'm going to grab some contour information. I'm going to get a digital elevation model. And I'm going to get the place names. This is the data that I'm going to load into my site. I'm not going to load it all though. I'm going to do a search for Mortity Road. This is the island that I'm going to populate with data. So if I just come back on out. So each of these layers is in here. I could change the order of drawing a bit just so we can see all the bits. So I've got my DEM in there. And I want to grab a copy of that data. So I'm going to go into export the crop remains from what I was looking at. I'm going to leave it as a geo package. And for the grid, I'll leave it as a geo tiff. I am not going to reproject, even though I could. And I'm going to go ahead and hit create export. So that's going to do a cut out of the database of all of these layers here. And it will present me with a link that I can download. While that is happening, I can cruise off to this new site that I'm going to populate and uh, we can go through a few things and then I'll come back and grab that data. So Mortiti Island is an island off the coast of New Zealand. It is what we were just looking at. I'm going to set up a service for them and populate it with data that I've just downloaded off the LINS site. There's a few things I can do while we're waiting. Has that finished? Hasn't started. Oh, how on, that's going to blast through. I might give that a sec. So this is going to be a risky demo. Everything is live. Everything, nothing is prepackaged. There's much scope for chaos, but hopefully it'll all be good. Oh, I'll let that keep chopping. All right, so when you take out a site with coordinates, you get this. It is a site. You get to choose your name. Um, you can have a custom URL, so you could lose the coordinates out of there altogether. You choose the uh, site name, so it's going to be Mortity Demo Service. Um, when I come to the site for the first time, which is what I'm doing right here, there is no data, nothing is populated over here. That's because nothing has been loaded yet. So we can get started. I'll have a quick look, see if those are finished, and they have. Joy. So I'm going to hit the download button. That data is going to get downloaded, and that is done. So now in my downloads folder, I've got a zip file. And it contains all of the layers that I'm going to need to populate this uh, site that I'm about to work on. So if I go over to the site, there can be a bit of an overhead with loading data. So I will do that first. One of the prerequisites for loading is to create a group. Because I'm an administrator, I have this manage button. My end users will only have a data and a map button. I um, should have mentioned the data button turns this data browser on and off. And the map button turns the map on and off. So the manage, I'm going to take me into the back end of coordinates. This is where all the configuration is, and it's where I'll be doing a bunch of things today. Oh, I'm in the wrong site. So I'm going into the site settings. Uh, the first thing I want to do is create groups. The way we do permissions is everything gets put into groups and users. So the first thing I'm going to do is come over to groups. I'm going to make a new group, and I'm going to call it Mortiti, which is the name of the island that we're dealing with. So I can create my group. Because I created, I'm in it. If you were wanting to later share data with other people, you would come on over to groups, create other groups, and then you can add users to the groups. But uh, we're not there yet. So now I know one of the long running things that happens when you're setting up a site is getting the data up onto the site. So we'll go ahead and get that out of the way right now. To do that, we come over to Upload. I can click on this Upload. Take me to my Downloads folder. This is the layer that I just downloaded. Let's grab it, hit Open. So now the first thing to do is assign a group that will own it. That's why I just made the group first. Then we hit Upload. And uh, so I've got a zip file, and it contains all four layers that I pulled off. You could have 
four different zip files with one um, layer per zip. You might have a geo package or a file geo database that had four layers in it. Um, there's a number of different ways of doing that. So for starters, I'll get out of here. Let's have a look at what I've got in there. I've got a digital elevation model. I've got some place names. I'm going to grab the place names first. And I'm going to say, let's do an import. Um, it's grabbed the title from the metadata and the description from the metadata. That's handy. I'm not going to do very much here. I'm just going to go on down and say import. That'll kick off that import. So that data is now being brought from the upload area actually into my site. I can go back later and configure some of these things, which I will do. I thought, given that this operation can take some time, let's upload a few things straight off the bat. So I'm going to grab the building outlines, import. And you can do multiple things at the same time. Um, you don't have to hang around and watch this happen. So that's two things going. I'm also going to grab the digital elevation model. So this is a zip with a bunch of TIFFs. I'm going to grab all four TIFFs. And I'm going to do an import. I'm again going to accept the defaults. It shows me that I'm about to grab a few TIFFs there. And then they come. I can, at a later date, come back and do an update. Uh, that would be just grabbing more TIFFs and merging them in or grabbing more vector data and merging it in. I can go back into manage data, have a look at what's happening over here. So I've got three layers coming through. This guy who came first, it should be reasonably far through. These are small data sets. You'd be crazy to use big ones for uh, such an exhibition. So if I go back to upload, I'll grab that final layer, which I believe was the contours layer. So drill down, geo package, find that layer, do the import. Scroll back down here, hit import. Right, so I've now got four layers loading. I'll go back into manage. I can see that they're all happily ticking away. I can check the progress of them. 80, so it looks like we're going to have some things to work with fairly shortly. Um, while those are coming in, I'm going to cruise on over to site settings and we're going to do a bit of personalization or branding of the site. So the site name here is called Mortity Demo Service. I am going to upload a website icon, which I have sitting down here. So let's grab a logo, do an upload of that. Oops, that was the wrong one. I want to grab the favicon, don't I? So grab the little one. This is a favicon. When I upload it, it will appear over here so that you can just to decorate your tab for primary logo. I'm going to come down here and grab the logo itself. And let's load those up. So now I've got a logo. This guy's going to appear over here. This guy's going to go up onto the tab. Because it's got a black background, I don't have to change it. I could come in here and change it. You could use the um, hex value, the RGB value. Uh, just grab a color picker website, put your logo in there. Take a look, grab the output, plug that in there. Um, what I'm going to do down here is add a, what am I doing? I'm going to add a custom link. So I'm going to call my link discover. Mortity. And I'm going to grab a link here. Now I'm going to, oh, did I, yes. I'm not sure I did that correctly. No, I didn't. I didn't name that correctly. So let's go back to here and call it. Now we save the settings. So everything I've just done there should be applied. Uh, if I go back to the site and reboot it, I should find that my icon's been loaded up. So there we've got the new favicon up here. I've got a new icon and I've got this oh so fancy drop down menu, which will have a link which opens in its own tab and it's just going to give people more information about the island.
So obviously you can populate this with as much as you like. You can have as many drop downs as necessary. Interestingly, we can see here that the data that I've loaded has looking looks like it's all successfully loaded. So let's close that map. That was the one where I actually grabbed the data from another site. So now we can start to load the data into the map. Uh, just to show you what that looks like. So there's my DEM. There's my place names. And I can add the contours and what we do with building outlines. So this is some of the information that I'm going to build for the site. So we're already quite far down the road. But um, I'm going to make a few changes to some of these layers. So I'll back on out of here to the ones that I'm going to change. And we're going back to the manage area. So let's just have a look at what happened under manage data. Each of these layers has been loaded. I can go in to these layers and make changes to them. In fact, I'm going to come into the place names. So these are just points. Uh, that isn't the most awesome thing to display on a map. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make some labels. Let me just grab some label text. So I'm going to make a new map style. Up here's the default cartography, which is just blue points. I'm going to make another style and I'm going to call it labels. First step is you go into edit style. This is Carto CSS. In here, you can create new things, which is what I intend to do. So I'm going to drop my text in there. I'm going to grab the layer number and update my layer number. Then I'm going to blow away the old stuff. And I'm going to hit save. So now I've got some labels. Um, there's a few settings in here. These are, You can find out all this stuff on Cardo CSS. There's a whole lot of things you can do. You can do attribute based things. You can do zoom, different rules for different zooms, tons of things. But for today, I just wanted to show you that this functionality exists. So now that I've made my labels style, first thing I want to do is hit publish. And that's going to start publishing the tiles. Um, this can take a wee bit of time. I think I can go away and come back. Normally I'd hang around there. Let's make sure we can go away and come back. Yeah, so that's just going to publish away. Um, when it has completed publishing, I'll come back and make that the default style for that label. And then we can add it back to the map. And that will suddenly make a whole lot more sense. So one of the next things we want to do is... I'm going to show you how to um, ingest data from different places. So at the moment, we have done an upload. That's simply upload. Um, you can push a bunch of different file types in there. What I want to go through are some of the things you can do in here. I'm only going to do one of them. I'm going to connect to an ArcGIS REST endpoint. But I am going to mention that I could connect to an Amazon S3. There's a bit more work involved there. Essentially, it's a cloud formation template, and you connect our site up to your S3 bucket. You can ingest across uh, Postgres database, data gateway, and WFS. There's different methods of connecting to all of these, but once you have done so, the method for pulling the data across is the same. So I'm going to connect to an ArcGIS REST endpoint. I've got a copy of one sitting on my clipboard. This is a Bay of Plenty Maps environmental map service. I'm going to call it. maps my own in group it's one of the reasons you just kick your group off fairly early you really need a group for just about everything that we're going to do so now i have a connection to bay of plenty maps it's doing a scan i can in fact click on the scan and if i sit here for long enough i'll be able to watch what happens what's happening in the background is we're connected to that arcgis service we're scanning whatever my url was uh, and below, so you can go down quite low if you want to scan less things. Um, we're looking at all the, the data sets that exist on there, and then once they all um, have been found, I can go into browse sources and start ingesting data off that. So this is a bit of a lottery how long this takes. It depends how many feature services are on them are on there. So if I drop that feature service in here, we can have a look. So it looks like there is... Uh, quite a lot of things in there. So that scan could take a wee bit of time. Uh, 
we can get out of there for now. So I'm going to head back on over to manage data. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you is if I go back to groups, let's imagine that we have a need to share this data with an external group. So for, for that, I'm going to uh, make a new group. I'm going to call it Fishman. Could be anything, could be contractors, could be whatever it is you need to share your data with. So say we're going to share this with fishermen that want to know some things about Mortity Island. So I create my new group. Now, how you get the users in is there's a few ways. You can say invite user. I drop someone's email address in here and say I want to add them to the fisherman group and then send them an invite. They'll get an invite, they'll get an email that says, You've been invited to the Mortity Island group. Um, would you like to accept? You'll click on that. That'll take you to the site where you set up your password and you um, will have access to any data that's been made available to yourself. You can also, if you've already got users, I can open up my fisherman group and I can say add some users. I already had Hamish in there, so I'll go ahead and add him here. There we go. And I'm going to say that he can access the data. I could allow him to manage the data and I could allow him to manage the group but you're generally going to want your end users to simply access the data. That's going to give them the ability to build their own web maps, to download the data, and to interact programmatically with that um, data. So I'm happy with that setup. I'm going to head back to manage, check to see whether the various things have completed yet. So if I go back to map services, this guy is completed. That's lucky. Now I'm going to make that my default style. That means that when this data is displayed in our map viewer, it will have this label style that I've added to it. And to prove that point, we can head back over here. And I should be able to grab the labels, the place names, and add them to my map. So now we're starting to get somewhere. And just another interesting thing is because I did a crop, just this is in fact the whole country but I've only taken a very small amount of data. So uh, the cropping is handy because you why work with a massive amount of data that you just really don't need, which is a benefit your end users get. They can crop things out of all of our different data types and download them. So the other thing I want to check on is how did my scan go? That did appear to have a number of data sets in it, but if I go into data sources and we go into bot maps, looks like the scan is finished. So if we look here, Bay Plenty Maps, compare that to here, it looks like I had put in something down at a lower point, which is handy. That's why it went quite fast. So if we go into Bay Plenty Maps, go into the environment, somewhere down here, I've got a layer that I want. There it is. So it's in Regional Coastal Environmental Plan. Regional Coastal. Right. So the Mortity Protection Area. That's the layer I'm interested in. Let's go down. We do an import. So now I'm basically got the same look and feel as the imports for data that was uploaded. I can fill out all of these things. Time is short. Let's just do it. Import. So really, all you need minimum viable product is you need a title. So that's going to make this a bit wordy, this title. Might possibly go back and change that once it's in. In fact, definitely will. But um, in any case, what is happening here is we are pulling a feature service off an Esri REST endpoint, ingesting it onto our site. And once it's on our site, we can do whatever we want with it. There is an attribute called auto update. I could set it to scan the underlying data source and pull uh, updates over as and when required. That's a job for another day though, I think. So we'll just let that come across. Uh, while that's happening, we can go back on over to manage data. And what I want to show you here is, say for these contours, let's just open those up. 
So we wanted to share those with people in my fisherman group. What we can do is I can say, I want to go into access. Under here is where you determine who can see what. So if you want your data to be fully public, you can come here and there are levels of permission that you can assign. There's no access. That's how it's set right now. So private, internal only. Um, find only, they can discover the data set, but they can't do anything with it. Um, anyone can view no other access. So that's where you can view it in the platform. And then if I was to check this bottom one, then that means that you can find the data, load it into a web map, export the data, or interact with it programmatically, fully open data, much like what I was just pulling off the uh, LIN site at the very beginning. I can also say anybody on my site can see this, not externally. So say if you had a private site and you wanted to share data within your organization, you could set it up to be site-wide. Or if you wanted even more fine-grained permissions, you can come down here and say, I'm going to let anybody in the fisherman group Download this data. Again, view, find, download, administer. So if I set that up and apply it, that now means that I have updated this layer to be shared with the group fisherman. And I could do that with all of my layers, but yeah, more most importantly, I just wanted to explain that that is where you do that. So now if we go back over to manage data, I can see that this guy's arrived. I just can't take that name. That's too big and long. And we don't really need that either. So let's get rid of that. So that data has arrived. These are these protected fishing zones around this island. Um, important that we don't overfish. And I'll publish that again. Once that's published, which now that the data has actually been loaded, it should be a fairly quick publish. And to prove as such, if I get out of there and I come back into here, it's not really quick. In any case, that is ticking away. That will appear up the top there as soon as it is completed. Now what else did we want to do? So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to get out of here. It has finished. Joy. Back to the front end. I should find my new thing down here. Let's add that to the map. So now when we zoom out a bit, I've managed to pull across these. I can close this contents thing here or reopen it. So it's in the way. Let's get rid of it. I can also change this map to 3D, which means that I will have the ability to do things like this. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share this data out with an end user. What I probably should have done is shared all of my layers with Fisherman. In fact, well, let's do that. So... If I go back to this guy, I'm going to say access, fisherman, and download, set, apply. And I'm also going to do that with place names. And whatever the other one was. Building outlines. So you could have added these as you downloaded them. Um, I just didn't. I think I probably have to do this guy as well. Yes. Right. So now all of the layers that I've uploaded are available for people in the fisherman group, which is handy because now I'm heading back to my front end. I'm going to turn the data off. We're going to work out where we would like to start the view. I want them to be able to see these uh, protected areas. Once they get the map, they can zoom around, do whatever you like. So now that we've set the map up, I'm going to give it a name that's something more sensible than whatever that said. Let's call it cool. So now I'm going to share this map viewer. I'm going to keep it private. I'm going to say only people in the fisherman group are going to have access to it. I'm going to hit share. So now that has become a data type. I can grab a copy of it, close it down. We go back into the front end. 
I can go into my data types. In there, we can do stuff like filter by vectors, filter by, I don't have raster, I've got a grid, filter by grid, and I can also now filter by map viewers because I have saved this map off as a map viewer. Why would I do that? I would do that because having set my site up, I want to share my data externally, privately with some stakeholders in my fisherman's group. To do that, all I have to do is email them the link. When they receive the link, they should be able to see all the data that I've imported in a web map at the same extent, in the same draw order. And from here, they can do whatever they like with it. So they can, for instance, download it. They can reproject it. They can change the format to whatever formats we support, which is many different types. And for the GeoTIFF, they can reformat that into something that makes more sense for what they're going to do. They can also look at the data and go, all right, oh, there's more stuff there. Yeah, those guys. They can also go, oh, services, what does this mean? And so that means that they can come over here, they can look at the layers that I've imported, and they can work out whether they would like to, so if I go to like this place names one, that has a tile service because I created a new um, style for it. It has a WFS, it has CART, which is our distributed version control, meaning they can clone it, get the service history. Uh, they can write a spatial query against the layer that's been published, and they could also grab um, the feature service URL. They would have to create an API key, which is simple, simple. You go create an API key. Let's just call it temp, and I want data access only. I'm going to say add. I can grab a copy of it. If it's an admin key, we'll never show it again. So definitely grab a copy of it. But if it's just a data access one, it will remain there for a while. Uh, now when I say close, I can say plug in my temp API key, which it already has done. There is a feature service for an Arc REST endpoint. If I head on over to AGOL or Enterprise, I can drop this in there, and that is now talking straight into Esri with my feature service, which ironically I pulled off Esri in the first place. Yeah, or I can download the data. So yeah, that's a fair amount of information. I think we'll just leave it there for now. And I will go back to Jonathan and see if there were any questions. Hey, all right. Thanks very much for that. That was an excellent, very thorough demo. Um, we only had one or two questions from the attendees. That the first and most important one was, um, will there be a recording of this demo and will it be shared? And the answer to that is yes, we'll, um, we'll share a recording in a week or two. Um, the other questions that I came up with while you're going, you actually answered all of them as we were going. So I was going to ask about uh, scaling data sizes. Um, you know, can these sites hold large, large national data sets? But you answered that. I was going to ask about uh, public versus private um, sites. Can they be used for delivering open data and also um, sort of securely storing private organizations' data? And you, you answered that too. Um, you covered off my, my favorite stuff, which is 3D maps and 3D data. Um, yeah, so I guess really the only question I had left was um, what would be the – the next steps for our attendees that that have now seen how easy it is to set up their own site if they're thinking about wanting to have a, a bit of a deeper play with the product or potentially set up their own site what what's next yeah so the um, best thing oh you go in no you go Elas. <laughs> no i trust you go oh sweet um <laughs> Um, yeah, so if you have any questions or interest in a coordinate site, just get in touch with us. So you can do that if you go to coordinates.com. Um, if you have a look at the data tab, you can actually play with a whole bunch of data sets that are already freely available. We have a lot there for the US. Um, we have many publishers around the rest of the world. So you might find something 
that is from your location. If not, you could find something from another location and just have a little look at the data there and that will give you a feel from the user experience. Then um, if you're interested in a site for your business, then just reach out through us through the site or um, our email addresses are available. Um, and then we can talk about how it might work for you. Or even if you're just curious about your workflows um, and if it, that's usually what our conversations are, we would like to learn about what workflows you need to do um, and then see if coordinates is a good fit for you. Um, but yeah, it's usually just Eli and I on the call and it's really nice for us to speak to people and learn about what um, businesses are up to. Yeah, I think cool, we have a Yeah, it's actually a really um, good question. Uh, it's around scripting different functions from within the the platform. Um, yeah, um, you want to sure. handle that, Eli? Yeah, the um, everything I was just doing was API driven, so you can automate absolutely anything there. Um, the web map, the layers that are published, have all the services hanging off them that you can also um, utilize. We have a Python client that can be used to talk to the API. And the thing I didn't really go into is called cart, which is a wrapper around Git, which means you can do clones, you can create branches, you can do merges, you can have conflict resolution, things like that. Um, so there are, depending on what you want to do, there's a ton of different use cases that people might have. And then obviously you can grab WFS, WMTS and put that into your front ends. Um, we, if you're what you're getting at is can we add widgets to the map we have a thing called accelerated development where you can send us your requirements and we can add things to your version of the site um, so yeah I hope that answers your question yeah cool um, and yeah shout out to Gafaro from Benin uh, we're all from New Zealand so we do actually have um, clients all around the world we do have clients in Africa and Zambia and South Africa um, so yeah, it's really great to hear we have an international audience here today. Um, cool. So on that note, it is our night time here. I think it's time for us to finish up this webinar. Uh, like I said before, please do get in touch if you'd like to talk with us. And we really appreciate everybody's time um, with us this afternoon.